Now we're going to get into the hard stuff. So it's combining the transformations. So we're going to combine all the translations, combine the reflections, and combine the stretches. So multiple transformations can be applied with a function that looks like this. Now I showed this in the last section, but overall it still applies the same thing. The outside characters, the A and the K, still affect only the Y, whereas the B and the H only affect the X. We still maintain the exact same thing. Opposite on the inside, same on the outside. To accurately sketch a graph of a function, the stretches and reflections, so the A and B always have to occur first. So whether it's a vertical stretch or a horizontal stretch, whether it's a reflection over the x-axis or a reflection over the y-axis, those will always happen before we move left, right, or up and down. Basically, it's the same as order of operations because multiplying and dividing do take place before adding and subtracting. Or if you think alphabetically, A and B come before H and K. So what we're going to do is we're going to describe what happens with this and then sketch it. We may use the table of values, mapping notation. All right, so for A. First things first, this two on the outside. That two is whatever's in front. So that would be the A value. And A of three is the K value. So that A means it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. The subtract three means it goes down three. So these are the descriptions that I expect you to write. Now you'll notice on this question that a lot of things that we've done aren't going to or, well, well, we'll get into it, I guess. All right. Now, if we were to do this as a mapping notation, x, y, notice how vertical and up and down don't change anything with our x's. But to vertically stretch by a factor of 2 means that our y's are going to have to be multiplied by 2. And subtract 3 means that we're going to be going down 3. I'm going to also do a table of values. Because as soon as we have our mapping notation, a table of values is actually super nice to do. So if we identify our points, negative 4, 4. 0, 6, 2, 2, and 4, 2. Notice how in this one, our x's are going to have to stay the exact same. Nothing has happened to the x's. So all of the x values are just going to remain as negative 4, 0, 2, and 4. But what will happen is that our y's are going to have to be multiplied by 2, and we're going to have to subtract 3 from them. Now, I'm perfectly fine with you showing this, or like just do it, sorry, just doing it as one, because by grade 12, you should know that 2 times 4 is 8, subtract 3 is 5. 2 times 6 is 12, subtract 3 is 9. Like I, I do expect that you're able to do things like that pretty easily. 2 times 2 is 4, subtract 3 is 1, and 2 times 2, subtract 1, step 1. So when we graph this, now, I am actually going to, I'm going to graph this original first here. Just so you can see, if you want to graph this, great. If you don't, that's perfectly fine. But I just want to emphasize what this looks like when we do these vertical stretches and the translation. So our function 
looks like that. But when we do the transformations, the negative 4, oh, 5, 0, 9, 2, 1, 4, 1. you'll notice quite a few things about it. Obviously, you can tell that it's a lot higher vertically. It hasn't changed anything horizontally. It's still the same domain, but our range has certainly changed. If we were to count it up from two to six, well, that's a height of four. But as soon as we count it up on our new one, from one to nine, that's a height of eight. So it has been vertically stretched by a factor of two. It's twice as high now. But also notice how every single one of these points were stretched by the factor of two first. So six would have gone all the way up to 12, but then that point went down to nine because of that down three movement. Four went up to eight, and then down three to five. Two, went up to four, and down three, put it down to one. So each of these points still follow this. Overall, the table of values is probably the easiest way to graph it. It's a lot harder trying to do it just as is. But when we start dealing with looking at the graphs to determine the equations, that's when a lot of that artwork is going to become a lot more difficult. All right. Next one. Notice how everything's on the inside, which means this one we're only going to affect the axis. This one's our B, and I am actually not going to call this my H yet. It is absolutely horizontal stretch by a factor of the opposite here. The opposite of the one half is two. Now, the subtract part is still okay. We are still going to move right because it's the opposite on the inside. But we need to actually identify exactly how far right we're going to be moving. Because our form is not exact. Notice how our form is a f of b bracket x subtract h bracket bracket plus k. Long story short, that B value has to be completely isolated. Now, if there's no H value, then we're fine. But in this question, our B value is not completely isolated in front of our X. Yes, it's still in front of our X, so our B, B value is still fine, but it's going to directly affect what our H value is. In order to find out what that H value is, We actually have to factor the one half out. Now we're not going to put it directly in front. We're just going to literally leave it in front there. So it actually be f of one half x subtracting something. Now factoring is like dividing. So if we were to take negative two and divide it by a, by the half, multiply by two over one. Well, then we have x subtract 4. So this is actually a graph that is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. And that subtract part means we're actually moving right 4 units. If we go by the mapping notation, x, y, notice how the horizontal and right is only affecting the x's. So horizontal stretch by a factor 2 means that our x's are going to be multiplied by 2. Moving right 4 means we're adding 4. And like I said before, notice how the description and this mapping notation, they look identical. The only thing that's different is the equation. It's just <laughs> how this map is. But the good news is we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of units with this stuff.
So it's it's going to get old, but somehow you're going to get very proficient at it. The Ys aren't changing. So the last bit that we need to do is change the points. So the points, the original points are changing. So I'm just copying them down from over here. But on this one, the Ys are not changing. So I'm just going to leave the Ys the exact same. 4, 6, 2, and 2. And then I need to take 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8, and add 4 to get a negative 4. 2 times 0 is 0, add 4 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4, add 4 is 8. 2 times 4 is 8, add 4 is 12. So if we were to graph this, negative 4, 4. 4. 6, 8, 2, and 12, 2. If we do the comparison, Original graph looks like that. So since this one only had horizontal stretches, we'll notice that every single one of our points has been horizontally stretched. So from negative 4 to 12, is a space of 16. Whereas this one, from negative 4 to 4, is only 8. So it has been horizontally stretched by a factor of 2. But the other thing you need to note is that when it was stretched, this part that was on the left-hand side of the x-axis, well, that stretched to be way over. If we were to sketch this out, so I'll kind of show you what it would look like. If we had stretched this as a step by step stretch by a factor of two it means that this point this zero six would never change but this negative four would be way down at negative eight this two would become four and the four would become eight so when you actually move this after split into two things. Yes, I know that my lines are not the greatest. Then when I move the right four, that's how we're getting this. So I'm just kind of emphasizing that extra bit of transformation bit so it's a lot easier further down the road. Horizontally, anything that's on our y-axis isn't anything that changes. So a lot of things that you want to look for are kind of points that are not going to change originally. So anything that's on the y-axis, if we're doing horizontal translations, or anything on the x-axis, if we're doing vertical translations. Now, this one didn't have any vertical, or it didn't have anything, but we can still make the connection between, okay, oh, hey, this one's a vertical stretch by factor 2 because it's now twice as high. This one is now twice as wide. All right. Uh, this one I know I give a lot of lot of extra room for, and it's not actually needed. But we're going to describe a combination of transformations that should be applied for y equals f of x equals x squared. Now, if we were to rewrite this as a function, this g of x would actually be n negative 2 one half x plus eight. Since the original function is x squared, I've actually put my square there. Subtract three. 
Now, this definitely looks a lot more complicated than what we had done in pre-calc 20, mainly because of that B value. If we didn't have that B value, you would be set. You know exactly what this does. It just means that our staircase of what, 3, 5, 7, now is going to become 2, 6, 10, 14. The negative means it's going to go down. Our vertex is now in negative 8, negative 3, and we're set. So I know I went really fast through there, but hopefully that does jog a lot of your memories. All right. Let's, let's describe the transformation. Now here is how I want you to do it. I want you to literally start at the beginning. What does a negative out in front do? Well, a negative, remembering these two things, deal with our y's. So if our y's become negative, that means that's going to reflect over the x-axis. So that I relate to the graph. What positive y's? If they become negative, they reflect down here. Negative y's would be reflect back up here. So that is where we're getting that reflecting over the x-axis. This two here means it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. This one half means it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of two. Because it's the opposite in here. The opposite of the one half is two. Now, unlike that last example, our B value is already isolated. So we can just go right into it. Pops on the inside, that says plus eight. So that means that we're going to go left to eight. This one, down three. Now, just for marking scheme, just so you know, usually when I do it, just when I ask for a description on like a unit assignment or exam, I usually make this this mark out of three. It's a half a mark for each description, plus basically a bonus for getting all of them right. So if you forgot that reflect over the x-axis, you'd only get two out of three. I know it's it's not a perfect grading scheme, but it's just so I don't have to, don't try and make one question worth two point five and the next one one point five, and then I just have some kids getting thirty nine out of 47.5. It's just, it doesn't really work. So you basically get a bonus half mark just for writing down every characteristic. So it's usually half. So if there's only two, it's only gonna be worth one. Like if there's only the left eight and down three, well, that's out of one. Perfect, done. There's five. Oh, well, I just rounded up to three. And if there's only four things that happen, then there's only out of two. All right, on x squared. On x squared is a problem. Uh, so let's, well, let's do the mapping notation first. x comma y. Well, what's going to happen to our x's? Our x's are the inside. It's the horizontal stretch by a factor of two and going left eight. And then our y's, reflecting over the x-axis and a vertical stretch by a factor of two means our y's are actually going to be multiplied by a negative two y, and then we're going to subtract three from them. The next part is to identify some points. So since this is the equation f of x equals x squared or y equals f of y equals x squared, there are some key points on a y equals x squared graph. X comma y. Now I like putting a few points on. So like if x is negative three, y would have to be nine. Because negative three squared is nine. If x was negative two, the y value would be four. If x is negative one, then the y value would be one. 
and the x value is zero, then the y value will be zero. The x value is one, the y value is one. The x value is two, the y value is four. The x value is three, the y value is nine. So all of those, these are some points that would be on the x bar graph. Typically, these are points that could be determined really quickly. And with more, so like with an x squared graph function, that's something not too bad to do. On other functions, we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get to more units. So the next bit is to transform these, transform these points. Right. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Subtract 8 is negative 14. Times negative 2 is negative 4, subtract 8 is negative 12. 2 times negative 2 is negative 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, subtract 8 is negative 10. 2 times 0 is 0, subtract 8 is negative 8. 2 times 1 is 2, subtract 8 is negative 6. 4, subtract 8 is negative 4, 6, subtract 8 is negative 2. So the x value is pretty nice and easy. How about the y values? Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. Subtract 3 is negative 21. Negative 8. Subtract 3 is negative 11. Negative 2. Subtract 3 is negative 5. 0 subtract 3 is negative 3. Negative 2 subtract 3 is negative 5. Negative 8 subtract 3 is negative 11. And negative 18 subtract 3 is negative 21. So obviously you can tell from this graph that some of these points are not going to be on. But let's, I'm just going to sketch a y equals x squared graph. Oh, point is not right. A y equals x squared graph will be the same as x subtract 0 squared plus 0. So our vertex will be 0, 0, over 1 of 1, over 1 of 3, over 1 of 5. A wonderful portobello mushroom. So now we're going to see what this graph looks like when it's done the transformation. Obviously, we're not going to be able to put negative 14, negative 21, because that's well off the, eh, probably like, maybe like way down here, which would be like the very edge of your page if you try and make it as proportional as possible. But like we could somewhat estimate negative 12, negative 11. And negative 12 would be there, negative 11 would put us maybe there or so. So it's roughly, like it's not going to be perfect. But any points that we can put on, we're going to. Like negative 10, negative 5. Or negative 8, negative 3. Negative 6, negative 5. Negative 4, negative 11. That's not going to be perfect. But as best as we can do right now. 2, negative 21, well, that's at the very bottom of my page. Yeah, that's 10, 10. Actually, maybe this point would actually be a little bit higher. Maybe like right there or so. Yeah, that's 10. Roughly. Yeah, roughly. But either way, I just do what I what best I can. I know it's going to be a parabola. And there's my sketch. This is the original parabola, y equals x squared. That's been reflected over the x-axis. Absolutely, that's probably the easiest thing to ever identify. Has been vertically stretched by a factor two and horizontally stretched by a factor two. Now that those parts are not really the easiest to tell. 
But what you can't see is the height here is only one. But to get to the next points here, you can see that the height is two. To get to the next points here, the width there is two. To get to go from these points here, that's a width of four. So we can still see that it's been vertically stretched by a factor of two and horizontally stretched by a factor of two. Then we went to the next points, like to these ones. That's a space of four. If you measure this, that's a space of eight. That's height of four. This would also be a height of eight. And then it has gone left eight to down three. Left eight, down three. That's the last transformation that happens. So let's see if we can determine some, some equations here. Long story short, blue is the original, red is the red is the transformation. Let's see what we can do. Again, identify the stretches first. We can see here that's definitely been stretched vertically and it's been stretched horizontally. So if we look at it vertically, the height here is four. If we look at the height here, from two to 10, that's height of eight. So that has been vertically stretched by a factor of two. If we look at it horizontally, that's a space of eight. This is a space of two. So it's horizontal stretch factor. Is one quarter the size. Another thing that you might look at in this one is we don't necessarily know whether this point is now becoming this point or whether this point has become this point and therefore this point has become this point. So it could have potentially been reflected over the y-axis. But unless the question actually says it, we're not going to really worry about it too much. But I just like saying that as another alternative to the answer. The last bit is we need to see how much does it move left and right. Well, it's moved left seven and up two. So if you want to determine what the equation is, The g of x, which is the new function, so this red one, equals all of these transformations done to the f of x. While a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 is a 2, our f function. A horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 quarter does not mean that our b value is 1 quarter. It's the opposite of 1 quarter, which is 4. Going in left 7 means it's x plus 7. And up four or up two, sorry, it's up two. Now, an alternative to this question is with this reflection, you could also have put two f of negative four x plus seven plus two, and that would technically also be correct. I would never be able to mark that wrong because we don't necessarily know whether these points are in the same orientation or if it has been flipped. Because the reflection over the y-axis would happen well before we transformed it over here. Or sorry, translated. Um, now that's all that we have. We There's the potential if these lines kept on going on forever that we could have, instead of using the function, the f, we could use the absolute value. But since it actually ends, that's just what our function is. This is our f of x. Right. Um, trying to think if we need anything else on this question. 
can't think of anything. All right, last example. Again, as best as possible, I like identifying the points wherever, wherever you can. And it's easiest to see in between the points, and especially between our x-axis and the points, or x and y-axis and our points, it's always a lot easier to determine a lot of our stretch factors. So this is a height of one, this is a width of two, but now it's a height of three and a width of four. So this has been vertically stretched by a factor of three and horizontally stretched by a factor of two, it's twice as big. Just like in the other one, I'm sorry, actually not just like, we also see that it has been reflected over the x-axis because instead of going up, it's going down. Now, just like in the other one, we don't necessarily know whether this point is this point and this point is this one, or it's been, it's been flipped over first. So it could have also been potentially reflected over the, over the y-axis. So my memory is already fading a little bit, but overall, unless I actually state it, you don't necessarily have to include that. All right. Uh, this is a point that does not change. So I wasn't very clear on this one, but on this one, this is a point that doesn't get stretched. Whether we st stretch it to be twice as big and then to be a quarter of the size, this is a point that hasn't changed. So that's why we were able to quickly identify that it, it has moved left seven and up two. On this one, if we vertically stretch by a factor of three and horizontally stretch by a factor of two, this point still does not change. Zero, zero is a wonderful point as a reference. So now we have to see that it's moving right three and down four. So we want to find out what the equation is. It would be g of x equals See vertical stretch by a factor of three. Oh, reflecting over the x-axis is definitely one, so that would be a negative right there. Because over the x-axis deals with the y's. So that's on the outside there. A horizontal stretch by a factor of two means our b value is one half. Moving right three is x subtract three, and down four subtracting four. Now, it doesn't directly say that our original function is an x squared, but if we were to write this as an x squared graph, it would just mean that g of x will be a negative 3 bracket 1 half x subtract 3 all squared subtracting 4. Now, in this, again, in this question, it doesn't directly say that. So this would be the line that would be perfectly, perfectly fine. But if you're given the equation, it's a lot easier, or it makes a lot more sense to write it with, with the actual equation. Okay, that gives you time to have fun.